I like the fact that it's new truck and it's mine. I love the fact that it's badass. All right, guys, here's the deal. This is why this truck cost $227,000. I'm gonna go over some key features with you guys today about the truck. I got a, some cheat sheets here of some of the things that, um, that you didn't know about the truck or may did know about the truck. Thank you so much for subscribing. I appreciate it. I'm doing this to help guys out that ask me questions. I get a lot of emails every week. Hey, I'm doing this or I'm starting a, a dumpster company. What should I do? Hey, this is just how I do it. I had some bumps and bruises. I'm doing this for you guys. Hey, I enjoy doing it too, but I'm doing this and I appreciate it. Thank you so much for subbing. Hopefully you enjoy the content today. We got some really cool stuff. All right, guys, so here we are. We're on the T50 today. The reason I'm up here is not because I wanted to do something dangerous. The reason I'm up here is I wanted to give you kind of an idea on how big these things are in person. Looking at these videos, you can, can kind of get an idea of how big these hooks are and how, and how big the truck is. And it kind of gives you an idea with me in the picture on how big these trucks are and just how massive this piece of equipment is and just why the thing costs a, almost a quarter million. Well, you know what? It's a quarter million dollars, guys. It's there. By the time you pay for your insurance for the year and you buy the truck, you're a quarter million bucks for these trucks. So this is why we're gonna explain why these things cost a, two, a quarter million dollars. This is the massiveness of this truck. Gives you an idea of the sheer capabilities of the truck and what it can do. Um, a lot of the features that I'm gonna talk about are differences of the actual truck itself. The transmission. Let me show you something about the transmission. So I'm gonna show you a trick with the transmission. It's a trick and yet it's a, I'm gonna call it a trick. It's not a trick, but nevertheless, I'm gonna call it a trick. Positive and negative button, you push it down. Oil level, invalid ID, setting 045. It's, all right, so what's happening is it has to settle. And what you're doing is when you push the positive and the negative button, you're gonna be able to check the um, transmission fluid So here we are, we're at three seconds. It's about to stop settling. And it's gonna say trans oil level's okay. Listen guys, no reason to come come back and um, you know check your transmission fluid level. Now you can just do it right from the cab. Good to go. So, hey guys, this is the, um, the 4000 series transmission. And there's a, there's a, picture of the PTO on the transmission and I'm going to talk a little bit about this transmission. There's a huge difference between the tr transmissions options that you can acquire for the truck. 2000 series is not an option. Now on the T880, I don't even know if you can get a 3000 series, but this is a 4000 series Allison six speed transmission. This thing is bulletproof guys. I recommend the Allison automatic over any manual transmission out there for this truck. And, and, and there's, there's a few reasons why. Number one, you can get drivers, the, uh, you won't blow clutch, clutches out if you have drivers that may, maybe necessarily don't know how to drive a clutch as good as you would expect them to. Gas mileage, your gas mileage is better with this truck. I'll give you a for instance, the gas mileage on this truck with a um, 15 liter engine is better than my gas mileage on my nine liter. That's how incredible these transmissions and how fuel efficient the new engines are. So not only do you get more horsepower, but you get better gas mileage. 
I have no idea how they do it, but it works. The only thing I can think of is that it's a bigger engine, so it's not working as hard. And you know, we don't run a lot of heavy loads, so I'm, I'm assuming that when you're not under heavy load, it just burns more efficient. I don't know how they do it. I'm not an engineer. Hey guys, I just wanna let you know, we're gonna get this out of the way real quick. And this video that we're, you're watching this right now is being shot on the, uh, the E20 F2.8 Sony um, wide angle pancake lens. Um, our buddies over at Cardinal Camera, once again, they're sponsoring this video and we appreciate it. And we wanted to check out the 20 millimeter Sony lens. So today's, uh, today's video is being sponsored by Cardinal Camera. He does a lot of uh, still photography stuff already. He is getting more into the video end of things. Check him out over at Cardinal Camera. Check out the details below. The, on this particular truck, on a T880, they have what's called the wide um, on the front end, the extended um, bumpers here on, on fenders on the truck. And what this has is it's, it has what they call the wide track. So what that does is it spreads the front tires out wider and that, uh, that gives you better stability and a better, and a better um, drive. On something like that, it may it may seem like a small option, but I'll tell you what, I love the front end of this. Things this thing handles like a Porsche. The steering is awesome. On my other trucks, when I go around a corner, it actually, you know, you feel a little wobbly, I guess, or you know, you feel like you're, you know, you're not taking the corner as as strong. Um, these wider front ends, phenomenal. Now, you got to remember something. A 20,000 pound front end is only a 20,000 pound front end when you have the proper tires on it. If you don't have the proper tires on your front end, it's only rated for what the tires are rated for. So each tire has to be rated for 10,000 pounds. If you have a 20,000 pound front end and you get the wrong tires for it and DOT pulls you over, those tires need to be rated for 10,000 pounds. And on this front end, we have two steering boxes. We have a steering box on the driver's side and then there's an equiv there's a, there's one on the other side too you don't want to get one steering box on your front end it just wouldn't make sense to have such a heavy duty front end especially if you think you're going to max out a front end make sure you have two steering boxes and the proper tires now if you order it from the factory they're not going to not let you order tires that are that are too light duty for the front end but in fact when you get them changed or if you puncture a tire or when you wear them out or, or get them um, you, need, you need to make sure that you get um, the correct tires and, and make sure you get it, you, you get the specifications of the tires. Don't just leave it up to the guys at the tire place. Max speed, 68 miles an hour. The ratings on the tire, on these bigger tires, you also, um, there, there's things about these tires besides that, like they're gonna have a max miles per hour that you could run these at. There's gonna be a max pressure. This one is actually rated right on there. It says max speed, 68 miles an hour. This is my first truck with the big actually flotation tires. I was always talked out of these tires um, with my other salesman that, uh, and he never saw the benefit with them. Personally, I always wanted them and he always talked me out of them. I'm so happy I got the wide, um, profile flotation tires on this truck. It was a it was an order truck. These are 315 ADR 225s. Um, mud and snow, low profile, um, closed shoulder. That means that, that, the, that the tread doesn't open up all the way to, it's a closed shoulder, um, but it's still a mud and snow. It has a, a really deep tread in it because it's a new tire and it's a, uh, it's a mud and snow tire, it says. So it's a, it's a, uh, it's a sweet tire, I like it. This the Bridgetones, I definitely, the, the reason I like, uh, I'll, I'm gonna expand on that a little bit. The reason I like the flotation tires, number one, they look cool as shit, and cool is cool, and that's why we do it, because we wanna be cool. But the real reason is, is that the wider the tire, and it, the more of a footprint that you're on the ground. So if you, have a t if you have a 20,000 pound front end, and then you have just this amount of tire hitting the surface right here, I'm gonna draw a little square for you. 
that's all that's going to hit the surface when you're on somebody's um, driveway. Now, let's say you had a, a shorter tire. Let's say you had just, you know, nine inch wide tires or whatever. You might only have this much surface on there. Now, if you times this length times width, you're going to have, you know, a few hundred pounds per square inch. But if you widen the tire, you might only have 80 pounds per square inch hitting the ground. So what you're doing is you're widening the footprint and that's gonna put less stress on people's driveways and it's gonna put less stress on um, just people's driveways. For the road, it really doesn't matter. But in someone's driveway or if you're in the grass and you're widening that up, you're gonna have less per square inch pressure if you had of a wider tire. So that's why I like these big wide flotation tires. Less chances of doing damage to people's um, driveway and it's just a better wider tire. You'll get um, um, a lot more traction out of it and you won't sink into the to the to the dirt or, or soft surfaces as well either. So the wider tire definitely helps in, in a lot of scenarios. On these trucks, guys, we have a Jake brake on this truck. It's actually a Jake, well, Jake brake is actually a, um, a manufacturer's name. This is an engine brake, but I don't know if it's a, technically a Jake brake or not, um, but they are quiet. I put that thing on, um, there's four different settings on the, on the engine brake, and I'll tell you what, you can't even hear that it's on. So if you're in an area, you know, you have the regulations that you can't use engine brakes because of the noise, you don't have to worry about it anymore. These are so quiet, you wouldn't even know that that, that the engine brake is on. And a lot of guys on the on the um, nine liters, they'll have exhaust brakes. This actually has an actually a real um, engine brake. They work differently. Um, they give you more braking horsepower on an engine brake than they do on an exhaust brake. It just works differently, but. Um, in these they're just quiet and they and they and it works really well matter of fact on a few of the days when it was icy i wanted to take it off because i thought i was going to lose traction because it did break so abruptly so um be careful of that and don't use it when you're when you're in ice and when you're shutting the engine guys this is a safety so if you're checking the oil you don't get your head smashed you gotta lift that up before you shut it and on the uh on the uh peats um that you could slam your engine compartment, which if you slam your engine compartment, guys, you're gonna bust the pockets out. Always gingerly shut your engine hood because I've actually had some drivers slam the engine hood, probably and probably me, and crack the engine pockets on the, on the fiberglass. So be careful of that. One other thing I wanted to talk about, if I had to make a, if I had to make a change, and this would probably be for pal finger altogether, is that this hydraulic, um, control box. This is where all the hydraulics come into and this is where the uh, I don't know if there's any electronics in it. Yeah, there's electronics in there. I never opened it up. I probably should just learn my truck. Um, this is too high. What happens is when there's wheels on the front of your dumpsters, I actually have some that actually just rub on the top of this. So if I was um, pal finger, I'd probably think about lowering that if I could or if you could uh, you know, make sure when you put your dumpsters on that if you have front wheels on your dumpster that and you're and you're putting 16 footers on there that this doesn't hit the uh, hit your dumpsters because this could quite possibly if your wheels are a little lower than mine, mine just touch it. But if you had ones that are half an inch lower, you rip the control box off. So be careful of that if you are going to get a T50. We all know what this is. It's the diesel exhaust fluid. That's what DEF stands for, diesel exhaust fluid. Um, if you're gonna get a, a large um, horsepower engine, you might wanna get this to be like a 20 gallon tank versus like, I think these are 10 gallons or 12 gallons. I'd probably go a little bigger. If you do get that $10 option, literally, it's like 10 bucks difference. They make it twice as wide. Go ahead and get the wider one because then you're gonna have less fluid to worry about. Now I do notice that it, it gets flaky like that. I don't know if the, if the um, a bigger tank would have a problem if you don't use it fast enough. If it kind of like goes bad for the lack of a better term, um, you might want to look into that. But I, I think, you know, a nice bigger tank would be better. I would just have assumed they put a bigger tank on this, but they didn't. I would probably get a bigger tank. I don't know if getting a bigger tank, like I said, if you put too much in at one time and it's not a sealed container, if that 
you know, that flakiness is, is um, any concern or not. Diesel exhaust fluid systems already suck, so there's no reason to make it like suck anymore. This exhaust stack is fake. There's only one exhaust, real exhaust stack on the trucks. It's on the other side. This one's fake. If you just look down here, there it is. If you notice guys, that just ends, it doesn't go anywhere. But if you're gonna be using this truck for a T50, don't get, I'm taking this off. I can't see behind me. I'm gonna sell that thing on eBay or something. If you need one, let me know, message me. I'll sell it to you, I don't want it. The problem is when I'm backing up on a can, this is more in the way than it is. The only thing I like about it is a handle, but there is another handle in the, in the cab here. But I like it because of the handle. It's, 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 it's really convenient and, and gives me another point of contact when I'm coming in. But just to be quite honest with you, um, it gets in the way more than it is useful. I'm gonna take it off and uh, sell that thing on eBay. I take some brackets off and lose 300 pounds and, and call it a day. You know, the hydraulic tanks, they're a little smaller than what I'm used to. So if you do, you know, ever have a hydraulic leak, make sure you keep on top of that and check your, you know, your hydraulic levels, get them fixed right away. It looks like the reservoir is smaller. I don't know if it is or not. I'm just telling you what it looks like to me. I'm here at the back of the truck. And if you notice, here are the rollers where the dumpster hits. On my other truck, the rollers are in the same spot. The fender extends. The fender extends, and I'm gonna show you what I mean extends. The fender extends, on my other truck, the fender's back here, way back here. So you got about a foot and a half, two feet of more space that this fender extends. And what they did that for is that they had the, um, you know, you have your ICC undercarriage um, laws. If the rollers are here and the fender ended back here, that means that the dumpster is overhanging the truck that much further. So what they did was they extended that. This way you could take a longer dumpster on the truck. If this was back here and you had a 22 foot can, you'd have another, an additional two feet that this thing would be, your, your dumpster would be extending back off the truck and then you'd have to have ICC um, protection, you know, the, the lift up bumpers. So this eliminates that. Now, the only problem that I find with this design uh, and I'm not knocking the truck, because you know everybody knows I love Palfinger, but the problem is when you have your hook extended and you come onto your dumpster on a bit of an angle, I'll show you what I did. I'm used to the other truck. So what happened was I, I tapped the dumpster because I came in on an angle and then I hit the dumpster and I dented my brand new truck. So don't do the mistake that I did guys, come in on an angle because you're used to a different truck. Now this won't happen if you're not used to the other type of truck, but I'm used to the other truck. So I had to buy new rubber. And matter of fact, this was bent up a little bit. And I said, what the hell was that from? I thought I did it at the dump. I thought I hit a piece of debris. But here, it's the, it's the actual dumpster I hit. So I didn't even realize it until it was kind of too late. Matter of fact, I was a little worried about this and these just barely clear on some of my dumpsters. So I have about two inches to spare. Two inches to spare might as, might as well be five feet. If it doesn't hit, it doesn't fit. There's no way it can hit unless you come in on an angle. If you come in on an angle and you lift up your dumpster, you're gonna hit it. So the only way to do that, you can hook up, but don't try to lift it up um, until you come more square onto the dumpster. You're gonna have to lift it up and then straighten up. This way you don't do the same stupid mistake I did and hit your dumpster. Now, if you notice, it's only on one side because generally speaking, you're on the right side of the road or, or in, in our case, we're on the right side of the road and then I backed up and then it's always on the left side. And then if you notice here, I, um, this is from the dumpster too, so I gotta fix that. So don't do the stupid mistake I did. I could have ripped the freaking rear bumper off um, before I realized it. These things are pretty powerful. Is there gonna be things that I'd like to see different? Is there is there improvements? Yeah, but I'm one guy. No one gives a crap about what I say. Is there little things that I wish that they could do different at the factory? Yeah, but the factory's still awesome. I mean, yeah, you're always gonna have those little things that you wish you could make different or not. And um, I'll give you one more. Let me give you one more, guys. I'm gonna give you one more on closing here. These back rollers, I like them. I like them, but I don't. Um, I notice when I'm putting 
cans on that I get nervous that I'm gonna I'm gonna put the can up here. You see how here it hits sometimes? Um, I'm afraid that I'm gonna bend this. I'm not sure how strong that is. And the other ones, the wheels, the, the, the these are on the outside and they're heavier duty and they're shorter. And I just feel like when I used to take the other dumpsters on, when I still use the other truck, even though it's only a 20,000 pound hoist um, versus the 50,000 pound T50, I feel like the outside, when, the, when there's just one wheel and it's on the outside, I just feel like it's a safer situation, but I'm not sure. I'm, I'm still out to lunch on that. I like, I like the two wheels. These, these work really nice, actually. I really like the two wheels. I like that they pivot like that. That's really awesome. I just wish that they had something on the outside here. So if I was taking this off and the can was on an angle, it wouldn't come off this way. And if this was over here, it wouldn't slide off. I just feel like I'd rather have that protection than the inside protection. I could be completely wrong about that. I would almost like to see another one of these out here. Um, where, because if, if you do have a driver not paying attention, now, of course, we all know we're supposed to be safe, but things happen. There's gonna be mistakes. You're gonna be on ice. You could be in the mud. It could come on crooked. If this thing just happens to come off, Collywampus that I just feel like it's safer and I have had them before to where I had to you know rescue a can so to put it and the can was on this side and it actually saved it from coming off so that's just one more thing so in closing guys um, there's always going to be changes you're going to want to make to your truck and there's always going to be things that you call bullshit on the con on the on the, uh, the factory with Am I saying that? No. Am I, am I still in love with the truck? I freaking love my T50. I love the, I love the Kenworth T880. Um, there's a few idiosyncrasies that I'm still learning about it because I'm so used to the light duty hoist. It is a different manufacturer, different, same manufacturer, different model. It was the American side of, um, they call it the American hook lift versus the pal finger. That's about it guys. I mean, there, that's the truck. That's the, the kind of like the rundown and the things that I, I like about it. Some of the things that I wish that could be different. There's really nothing. There's no deal breakers here. There's not a, uh, there's not a, a thing on the truck that I would say, oh, I wish I didn't buy this truck or I wish I made a different choice. I love the truck. There's, I love the way it drives. I love the horsepower of it. I love the gas mileage of it. I love the way it handles. I love how smooth it is. I love how quiet it is. I love um, how powerful it is. I love the, I love the um, engine brake, how quiet it is. I like the fact that it's a new truck and it's mine. I love the fact that it's badass. And to be quite frank with you, there's really probably nothing I would change about it on a, on a, um, on a major level. Few quirky things that I, I wish could be different like this. I don't know why that's so high. Um, but nevertheless, maybe if pal finger, if you're watching, you could lower that a few inches. Um, I guess really that's about it. There's really nothing else. Um, engine wise, spot on, man. Cummings, bad to the bone. That's one badass engine. I don't know the actual specifications off. I think it's like 400 or 500 horsepower. I don't know. You engine guys, you know more about that engine than I'll ever know. I know how to check the oil. I know how to check the transmission. I know um, I know that that's a badass engine. I know that it runs good. I know it's quiet. I know it's gonna last forever. And I know I got a five year, 300,000 or 400,000 mile warranty on it. I know all that stuff. I know that that thing's gonna last me longer than I probably need it. And I'm gonna be selling that truck one day. And I'm gonna tell you it's gonna be ran light because we don't run a lot of heavy cans. And I know it's a badass engine. I love it. When you guys buy a new truck, I can't express how important it is that you get an extended warranty. We went with five years, 300,000 miles. And if you look at the invoice, it was $4,000 for the extended warranty and 800 for the, um, for the transmission. Actually, it wasn't that much. We actually had to pay more on top of this invoice because we extended it for three years. So I'd have to get an exact price on how much it was to go to the five years. Um, I can tell you that the extra two years was 4,000, but that we had to pay extra on top of that even. So this invoice is actually short by $2,000 because I remember I had to write another check to extend it. So I can't express to you guys, get your warranties. Um, these trucks are built like tanks, but 
you know, there's a lot of sensors on them, get your extended warranties. Don't cheap out on your warranties because one, one claim out of warranty could make your, can break your bank. Um, I'll give you a for instance, we had the other nine liter, the 2014, and we were having trouble with the regen. They actually rebuilt that entire truck under warranty. So they actually rebuilt the entire engine. That was my 2014, that was our first truck, the first series of the, of the regen on the, the def and after treatment. So get the extended warranty. get started I'm gonna go over some gauges here that we have you have the um, oil temperature you got your turbo boost gauge um, one thing I never had before that I really like well there's a few gauges here that I never had that I really like you have your rear drivetrain temperature gauge and what that shows is this is your this is your temperature in your rear and your front rear so you got your front rear and you got your rear rear temperature gauge and that that's good if you're if you're hauling heavy or if you start losing fluid you'll know it because your temperature will creep up you got your amps that's your um, your drain on your battery and your alternator and you have your transmission temperature obviously now these two I've never had before in the in the uh, cab you got your air filter percentage tells you when your air filter is clogged up and you got your fuel filter that tells you when your fuel filter is clogged up I've never had those guys Kenworth um, hooked me up with some cool gauges so listen guys listen with this this um, passenger seat if you take a lot of passengers you might want to consider trying to get that an air seat I don't know if it's an option or not I'm pretty sure it is I, I, I know it is on Pete's um, but if you take a lot of passengers don't forget your passengers are gonna want an air ride seat Matt didn't even know that his was an air ride probably till just now as I'm talking now he's gonna want me to order him an air ride seat but he didn't even know probably that I could got an air ride seat but this was a pre-order truck that's why we bought it because we needed another truck and to be quite honest with you if I had to order another truck I would order it with an air ride seat in comparison here is obviously the 500 way calibrated seat whatever you want to call it heavy duty awesome seat that the that the driver has hey why not hook up your passenger if you're gonna carry a passenger all the time so thanks guys I appreciate you watching um, please hit the subscribe button. We got a lot of cool stuff coming. I wanted to kind of do a review on the truck and show you guys the different things after using it for a month or so. It's been about a month we've had it now already and just wanted to show you some things that we like and things that we'd like to see maybe tweaked in the future. So thanks a lot guys and we'll see you on the next one. So what you have here is your rear drive train, rear drive train, well that's a tongue twister. <laughs> that is. You have your rear drive train, Engine or engine. I keep saying engine.